So application software is any kind of software that helps the user perform a task. So here's a list of typical application software. It could be a word processor, stock control, could be some invoicing system. Whatever the case, the helpful software designed to aid the user get something done. That's the key thing here. And software, application software can be broken down into three different areas. General purpose, special purpose, and custom written. We'll have a look at all of those three over the next couple of minutes. So general purpose software is things like Microsoft Office, and these are types of software that allow you to do something else with them. So they haven't a particular purpose, but you can do lots of different things with them. For example, a word processor isn't something that you just do. You use a word processor to maybe write a book. Okay, You might use a word processor to write a letter, perhaps design a poster. Whatever it might be, a word processor is, is a very general better kit used to do lots of different things. Same thing with a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet could be used to produce a graph, a stock control system, a database, etc. And so these are regarded as general purpose software. Now, there are other types, for example, special purpose. Now, special purpose software is written especially for a customer. And that's the key thing. This is written to perform a particular task. So, for example, a image viewing program is produced for that one purpose to view and edit images and that's it you might have a special type of software like a stock control software or a payroll software and its job is just to do that payroll does payroll it doesn't do anything else or you might have a simulation software or some kind of CAD CAM software all of these are special purpose because they are made for a particular purpose in mind so custom written software is a bit like special software the difference here is that it's actually produced and written by a software developer a programmer to meet the needs of the client so a bank for example might say look uh, i want a system produced just for this bank and a software house like say Pap gemini or uh, ernest and young or microsoft or, or it might even be a computer science student will produce a piece of software that meets the client's needs there are some major advantages clearly it meets the requirements of the customer it only has the features you want. It doesn't have any additional features. It does what it's meant to do. But there are some disadvantages. It isn't off the shelf. So there aren't other people you can go to and ask for help. You can't buy a book on it because it's just not available. There is a time delay. Clearly, it goes through the process of design and then implementation and then fixing and all the other things that you get in the system life cycle. And there are issues in terms of third-party support because if you want other companies to make add-ons, they need access to the source code and that can be a problem. Talking of source, let's look at open source and closed source software. Open source software essentially is software that's free to download and the source code can be edited. So you might download a piece of software like Linux and you can go into the source code and change and edit it so it does exactly what you want it to do. Okay, it's freely available. It's not like closed source software. So open source software, available, free to download, free to edit. Closed source software isn't the case. So Microsoft is a typical example of closed source software. You buy the software, you can't change it. Microsoft can, but you can't. And typically you pay for closed source software. Typically, it's going to be those kind of programs. So that's the real difference between open source and closed source. That's not to say open source is any less useful. In fact, sometimes they are particularly like Linux, much, much better than Microsoft. Well, that's been your five minutes of computer science. Hope you understand it. Let us know in the feedback. Bye-bye.